la la. Ooh la 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 la. Ooh la la. Yeah. Ooh la la. What was that thing? Mm. I, it was something like that. What's thing? That that joint. The way I used to leave messages on your phone. It was like. Oh. My mic is still uh, muted. Uh, <laughs> now my mic is muted. His, his accent. Yeah, like it's unmuted. Ooh la la. Yeah, like, like that like, guy. It was like no, Turkish you're not muted. Or some shit. Yeah, Turkish. Yui, <laughs> Yui, <laughs> you. you. we you. hear you. Yeah, hey, yeah. Hey. What's up? Hey, what's up, y'all? <laughs> Just let you know we're doing a show today. <laughs> we are here for a show. Yeah. Yeah. Today. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's happy. He definitely did one of those. Oh, I didn't see you in here. <laughs> oh hi. <laughs> oh hi. Oh. Ah man, it's a beautiful Tuesday. It is. It is. It absolutely is. Super absolutely. Tuesday. Yo, yo, yo. Super. Oh, okay. Long. Listen, we're back. We're back. I'm excited. Tonight's gonna be a phenomenal conversation. What's yeah. y'all mathematics, beloveds? Hey. You yeah. wanna go first? I think so. All right. So this is a grapefruit cava paloma, as it's known. Hmm. So this hmm. has a grapefruit soda, some fresh squeezed grapefruit, a splash of ginger beer, a little bit of lime spiked hmm. with a tequila of sorts, uh, some cava, and cayenne pepper. Wow. Yeah. OK. All yeah, right. you know, I, 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 this one. I didn't know you was gonna still go on the cover. Oh, yeah, I just minimized the you dose, just minimize it a little bit, just to minimize the dose. Mm -hmm. And hold on, you have alcohol in that one or no? It's spiked, <laughs> which with, with what tequila? Oh, okay, that's what you said. Mm -hmm. All right, I went back to the old faithful, the old traditional. All right, mm -hmm. for those of us who grew up in New England, we all went to the pub at one, one point or another, we got the speakeasy cup. And we got, you know, we got a fat <laughs> Irish coffee right here. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and, and, and Irish coffee consists of coffee, um, usually Bailey's or some type of cream, and uh, some whiskey. All right. So I needed a pick me up as I'm uh, pretty hungover right now, as it is. So it's a good hangover remedy for those of you who still want to be vibrant and full <laughs> of life and feel your sacred energy. So that's mine. What about you? Yeah, it is. Hey, hey. Real quick, though. Real quick. I have a quick ask. Brooklyn, is it possible to swap me with where Nana is? The chat room is going <laughs> insane about this. <laughs> oh, what's happening? What are they talking about? We're on the wrong side. You know, we've done a consistent amount of episodes, and you're always on this side, and I'm always on the other side. Oh, so, oh, 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 look at that. Oh. Right there. Democratic Wait, show. I'm in the, wow. I, I'm in the middle. Is am I usually in the middle? A democratic show. Is okay, there we are. go. I'm usually here, or is Jenna usually in the middle? <laughs> uh, uh, <Joe. laughs> <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> they said it's. Oh, so he's wait. gone. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, we got new configurations. <laughs> I mean, moves. I'm supposed to be on the other side of Jadena. You know what? I want to know what's in your drink. Okay. <laughs> More important than me. What's in my drink? Um, this is just uh, this is pink lemonade, uh, yeah. with um, Paul Mason apple. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, what, what is Paul Mason apple? For yeah, those what is that? Don't know, like me, I don't. It's know. like some type of old school. I mean, this is like old school alcohol. I don't know what type of alcohol it is, but it, when you drink it. It just feels like 1991 oppression. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what kind of oppression is that? Bro, first Wait. of all, first, <laughs> what oppression? What, 91? 91. Is that apartheid? That's, that's a different. Yo, let me say this. But what? What? How, I'm just trying to figure out like what liquor is not old school. I guess they all are, right? Whiskey, yeah, most vodka, of vodka. Yeah, they haven't, they haven't invented like a new liquor in the past. But vodka, feels 30 more, years. And I know it's been a while. Though. It's been a minute. Vodka feels more Forest Mill like Ford. Court, I will current. say I got a new um, medicine slash drug for y'all that I heard that I can't wait to try. <laughs> it's called Sassy Frass. Do y'all mm. know what? Do you know Sassy Frass? Nah, I don't what know. What is that. it? 
I know. Well, it's, isn't it? A, isn't it a plant? It's an actual plant. Yeah, and I always use it as a way to you know call somebody sassy, like you mean sassy. Sure. Part. Okay. But apparently, it's like organic MDMA. I don't mm. know. It sounds oh. amazing. Vegan <laughs> MDMA. <laughs> hey, yeah. Is it okay? Yes. Like vegan that. is vegan <laughs> MDMA. Yeah, it's cage free MDMA. Hilarious. Anyway, so wow. Okay. Cheers. So, cheers yes, to cheers. new experiences. Salud. 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 That it is. I say. Before we continue this week's episode two, I just want to take a minute to acknowledge a moment that we had last week uh, when I was speaking about this week's reading. Uh, I recommended to you, Yusef, um, pretty emphatically and passionately as I typically tend to get um, <laughs> the need to read uh, this week's reading, given you being a new father uh, and recently having a daughter. You, Dr. Umar, I, just want to take, you Dr. Umar. I definitely did. I definitely did. I definitely did. I definitely did. And I want to eat that. I want to eat that. I want to take responsibility for that because I was speaking out of turn, uh, not knowing what it means to actually be a father myself, not knowing what it means to actually have a daughter. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was speaking to uh, my intention was to speak more towards the need for men to kind of be engaged in these conversations around feminism. Absolutely. Uh, but again, I didn't mean to bring a daughter into this, and I want to publicly apologize to you and also to the audience as well. That's yeah, like, brother, you know, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. Like, especially, you know, that's the type of relationship we all have where we could talk, talk to each other about that. And I know what you meant. I knew what you meant. You know what I'm saying? And I, I just, I appreciate you, Nana. I really do. Absolutely. And, and I'll say Absolutely. big up to you, Nana, for even bringing that back. You know, I felt that at the end of last show and to you yui you handled that shit like a g on the show live mm -hmm. i mean so like i i appreciate both of y'all for handling absolutely. it both absolutely it on screen brother. and behind scenes yeah so bigger and i and i think that the way y'all handled it is a is an example for me as y'all brethren of divine masculinity mm -hmm. right when you're able to 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 speak from your your spirit and channel that which we don't see often in these in this era of patriarchy which is a big big reason why the book for today is about divine femininity and the mm -hmm. divine feminine mm -hmm. uh for those of you who read the book of today is the great cosmic mother a book by monica uh i still know, don't know how, how to pronounce yeah, it Saju. Didn't Saju. Find it. Saju. Yeah. yeah yeah i heard you Jew. Jew. i think it's you you Jew, Jew, I think. Okay. Yeah. The S is silent. Or slight, slight, slight S. Okay. It's Jew. Monica's Jew. Um, I apologize to you, Monica, if I'm mispronouncing it. But it, the book goes into an exploration of the goddess over history. Mm -hmm. So the what is the um, what was the goddess 200 years ago, 2,000 years ago? How has she evolved in different myths? How what is what is her relevancy for today? Um, so we have a quote for y'all from this book that speaks to some of what the, the the book is about female spirit the goddess is not fragile nor is it new not an invention of privileged women or an escapist new age elite we are tough and ancient tried by a million years of ice and fire um Read, you know, reading this book <laughs> you ever have a book where the words is just punching you in the mouth the whole time you read the book? Yeah, yo, that's what this yes, is. bro. Like, yo, 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 the first, yo, the first, yo, I was like, damn. The first, yo, the first couple of lines, evil? the first, damn. actually, the first, the first, like, three pages, dog, the energy, dog, that she came out the gate with, yes. it was like, it was like when Pac came out, it was like, First off, fuck, you know what I'm saying? Came out with that energy. Like that, I was just off the rip. It was like, I didn't give nobody a chance. Like it was just, I love that. Like when Pac was sitting, when he came out the court, that's my yeah, new style. Yep, exactly. Yep, that's yep, my exactly. new style. Uh, yo, <laughs> yo, it was, I was like, this book was punching me in the mouth. Every, every part of it that I was reading, every part where she's mm -hmm. just kicking knowledge. She's just, and it's and like, you know, I love the fact that she's using examples of like, She's using religion. She's using, you know, Judaism. She's using Islam. She's using Christianity. She's yeah. like, look at where this type of bullshit lives everywhere <laughs> in For every real. aspect. For real. And, yeah. 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 And I want to shout out real quick Chuck Lightning for and Wonderland Absolutely. in general, because uh, Chuck Lightning was the first one. And I know that Nate Wonder, Janelle Monet, Roman mm -hmm. John Arthur, the whole squad have read this book. But Chuck mm -hmm. was the one that introduced us to it. 
Mm -hmm. um, so please. big up to Chuck. They wish they could be here today, but they 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 couldn't make it due to prior engagements. But they wanted to shout out to every, all the lit reviewers there in the comment section yes, because yes. this book really it shaped them, and when they pass it on to us, it's helped us to reshape how we think. A mm -hmm. lot of people don't understand that, like the the image of divine feminine is not something that stayed the same the whole time. It's not something that's just been um, the from Christianity, Islam, Judaism. That's not the same view of femininity that different traditional religions had a thousand years ago or 2000 or four. Right. Mm -hmm. And so now we have to reexamine our relationship to the divine feminine and, and, and what that is. When y'all hear that phrase, what do y'all what do y'all think of divine I'm feminine and divine masculine? when we were talking about like especially when it was coming to religion it was the first time that i'm thinking to myself like is there's there's i think the two biggest there's three teachers right there's life life will teach you your parents would teach you and religion like religion is something that is like such a core and i was thinking is religion even teaching us patriarchy hmm. what do we call god in abrahamic religions what, what when we don't say the word god what's the pronoun we use and I was like, yo, okay, one layer is society, one layer is white supremacy, one layer is, you know, uh, being peer pressured. But then how the fuck do you fight the religious layer? Yeah. <laughs> the layer like that you like it's your religion. Bro, to, I, I'll to, say to I'll say toxic, this. Like, like what? I'll, I'll say this. We we and, and and you know, I don't me like none is not, not a father yet. But I do know that if I was to bring a son or daughter in this world, especially a daughter, there's no way that I would uh, give her a book or this or my son a book that has the pronoun he for God. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to retranslate it, reprint that motherfucker, put it on them silky ass gold ass pages. That <laughs> whole, got. Yeah, I'm going to reprint that whole shit. And you honestly, should. I'm going to take credit you, nigga, you and should, put my name. Should. You interpretation you see him at nighttime under, and, and, under and, red and light, suggest, under red suggest, light editing <laughs> editing the words like. and still have them read it still have them have them read the original too though yeah, because yeah, it's, right. to me it's important yeah. it's actually important for them to see yeah. see that because honestly it's not that's not even enough of a mainstream conversation within the actual yeah. church too Fam, you know bro, what i mean so i think like, yeah and then and then also still make your own version because that's yeah. definitely what my dad did but but that's what the book yeah. that's what when you asked what did i get from like that was what it hit me was like damn like is this shit, it's it's in it's literally interwoven into how we even look at god yeah which yeah. is kind of a big deal god's kind of a big deal so so it's the, like that god we, complex you usually only you usually are typically hearing men talking about that God complex. And I'm like, what does that mean when God is always referenced as the he, but mm. you're, and you're a he. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, you think absolutely. you're a God. Yeah. Absolutely. And a lot of people, uh, I can see some of the chat, like these people know what they talk about. Ray Hale talking about, they left the first book out, the story of Adam and Lilith. Lilith mm. was actually the first woman that was supposed to be in the Bible before Eve. And so Octavia Butler wrote a whole book about Lilith. Um, and a lot of people say that she was described as a black woman. So Octavia Butler took her and made this book. I think it's called Lilith's Brood, which is a trilo trilogy. Um, same with Mary Magdalene. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we talked about a little bit on the Gospel of St. Thomas show, but people looked at her as a whore. Other interpretations of early Christian mystic books say that she was actually Jesus's girl. Wow. And wow. or a sister figure that was a prophetess and like a, a a lead counsel advisor to the disciples and Jesus. Um, but these kind of books and interpretations were completely rid and they affect thousands of years. Yes. When these old old <laughs> yeah. men in the Vatican like, I don't like this book. Mm -hmm. I don't like that one too. Like nigga, you changing know, history. You're changing thousands. What is wrong with you, nigga? Fuck a hundred, <laughs> fuck a generation. What is thousands. wrong with you? Yeah. This we, is crazy. So that's what I got from the book. What did you yeah. got? What about you guys? What was something that you immediately kind of got just from the ethos of this book. I mean, for me, I, I think a big thing was like, just me also looking at how, from a scientific standpoint, or scientific standpoint, she came out the gate and really put on the table, like questioning things like Darwin and talking about like the ocean as like the womb of a woman, mm. essentially, right? 
And like, it's amazing because like, and just in thinking about that, right? One of the arguments she made was that being male, we always center it as like a primary form of existence, right? Like even in the Bible, it talks about Eve coming from the rib, right? Of mm -hmm. Adam, right? It's always mm -hmm. like, that's always the oh, Genesis, yeah, yeah. right? Which is and impossible. it's crazy because it's, it's impossible. crazy because even, even science <laughs> Women's like, ribs break. You, Women's ribs like, break and go back in place when they have, when they're pregnant. So they literally break. Yeah. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. She's you know, a ribbit guy. <laughs> <laughs> you, know I mean? you broke your rib. <laughs> Men be fucked up when our ribs are broken. <laughs> like, yeah. like you ever see Rambo and shit? You know, you know okay. what, what was that other thing that we we, we learned about too? About um uh the pain that a woman experiences oh, is yeah. the right? equivalent to a heart, a heart attack. attack. Yeah, is equivalent to a heart attack as a man. Right. Like, <laughs> like, and, and, and so like, for me, like, even just like the scientific arguments he was like positing, it was incredible because even like, you know, I had to dig in a little further and like research, but I, in my research, I was finding, I was being reminded of bio class and how in like early development of the embryos, the Y chromosome, right. Which is used to define yep. you as a male doesn't even exist mm -hmm. until mm. four to six weeks into the embryonic development. Mm -hmm. wow. So it's like, like even just that in and of itself, it's like, there's an argument to be made that in theory, we kind of all start out as female until it's later defined, you know? Yeah. So it was, yeah. to me, it was, it was just, I'm sorry. I think for men to like take themselves outside of that centering and actually see how even the function of maleness is actually secondary yeah. to femininity is yeah. incredible. The urethra is inverted and then it, to make yeah, exactly. the penis and the ball exactly. sack. And this is exactly. the, I'm gonna follow off that ball sack. Uh, and then, <laughs> this is the part. This is the part where you know, being a man, this is probably the best part to bring a guest in because I talked about ribs breaking. The entire chat room was like, "Nigga, they don't break; they stretch." <laughs> to me, that sounds broken. Okay, if my ribs are stretching, they're breaking. But with that being said, I feel like we should bring on our amazing, amazing guest. Jasmine Wild is a mother of two, Reiki practitioner spiritual coach, AKA life doula, the owner of Hey Baby Ultrasound Boutique. Uh, it's really Atlanta's only black owned elective ultrasound boutique. Wow. She is also a musician, just an overall badass, complete creative goddess. Born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia, Ms. Wild is passionate about the art of communication, deep healing, self-love, and learning to relearn. Would love to bring Jasmine on, Ms. Wild. Miss Wild, yeah, Miss Wild, she is. welcome. <laughs> How you hey, love. Hi. I think you're muted. Wait, you're muted. There you hey, go. There we go. Hey. There we go. Hi guys. <laughs> what's up? What's up? What up, though? Yo, this conversation has me all like tingly. I'm so glad. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> I'm Give so thanks. glad y'all are going here. Like, Give thanks. Woo. What's oh, your? Man. Before we get started, what's your divine mathematics? <clears throat> Water. No, I'm kidding. So <laughs> I got this real good stuff called um cherry pie. Hey, mm. Mm. does it does it mm. taste like cherry pie or you know like not the crust? at all? Not at all. <laughs> yeah. Cherry pie. Not at all. But it that's feels a, amazing. But that's the thing. I don't know where these names come. Especially, I know I don't, <laughs> guys, I don't know if you're in the weed business, but you he is. They name them like <laughs> oils. They name them like they name oils. The mm. best weed I've ever had was in LA. I got it in a barber shop. Salute Nana and Jadena for introducing me to this barber. She is a barber and will sell you weed. She'll sell you an eighth. <laughs> sell you an eighth and get your line straight. Hey. She is incredible. And the best weed I ever had was called Black Panther. Mm. Mm. I wow. smoked it before I got on the plane. Was high before I got on the plane. Was high <laughs> while I was on the plane. Was high when I was off the plane. And was high until the next morning. So hold on. Does she sell you the weed while she's like the blades on your mustache and shit like <laughs> yeah i got that gas if you need just so you know she hit your back of your neck with that pressure. alcohol no right she hit the right back your... okay yeah i'll take some yeah <laughs> she hit the back of your neck with your alcohol and be like <laughs> be like god damn <laughs> she'd be like look down there i got cannabis down there <laughs> 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 man hey you know what though the, the power of barbers like her actually speak to what the book is speaking about with the divine feminine the quote that we brought i think is important because it speaks about women not as or the feminine energy not as fragile and so often 
um, when we see uh, any sort of assertive or assertion from women, people associate with that the, as masculine energy. Like, oh, she, you know, I'm kind of, I grew up like a tomboy. So mm -hmm. sometimes I'm assert, yo, uh, mothers who yeah. are protecting children, birds who are protecting their nests. Mm -hmm. you know, I was mm -hmm. on the beach the other day and saw some, I don't know what it was, geese, goose, uh, goose or seagull. I don't know what Canadian it was. geese. <laughs> Some, okay, Canadian geese. As long as they know, no. And that shit was Canadian making. Geese, Matthew, I, I swear that fuck? shit was barking at me. It was, it was a mother that had a nest, and it was like, nah, nigga, oh yeah. I wish the nigga would. Yeah. I wish the nigga mm -hmm. would. Mothered so, by hmm. bears. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what are your what are your opinions, Jasmine, or in terms of these times and like as we're looking at this balance of masculine and feminine, mm -hmm. what do you see happening cosmically in this era? Ah, at this time, people are being, you have to slow down. And so lots of people are not able to run to their jobs or run to the things that kept them distracted. We all have to center in now. And before where, you know, someone would say like, oh, a woman's overly emotional or she's overexpressive. Now we're all in a place where we need to grab and hold in that too and hold into that a lot more. Mm -hmm. So people now have to sit down and we're journaling more, gardening, getting in tune with ourselves, things we would see more as like feminine, but getting more in touch with ourselves. And I think it's important. And it's crazy that the whole world had to stop in order for that to happen. But I see beautiful things happening from this. Speaking of that, speaking of like different cultures, right? There are certain cultures where this is, that's the norm to mm -hmm. go inward, to, to always be self-reflecting. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you guys think about that as far as like, if you look at us being in America, but what other places around the world where there's a culture of, of really actually going inward can repeatedly like that's a it's a it's a uh, an affirmation of it constantly being a part of the overall culture, because that's mm -hmm. something that I even looked at in this book was saying that the male version of that is just not it's aggressive. It's not <laughs> it's no it's not really reflection. It's reaction. If that mm -hmm. makes sense. What's interesting when you talk about going inward, I think about how. Um, when we talk about like cis cis men and um and, and, and as it relates to cis women, right? Mm. Traditionally, it's a man has been the projector, or everything is outside the body. The body parts are outside. Mm. You don't get you know you're not supposed to get penetrated and all mm -hmm. these stereotypes mm -hmm. around sodomy and whatnot. Mm. And then the women traditionally is 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 penetrated and is inward. Everything is inward. I wonder is is that something that you see as like innate and natural? And is these times of going inward ultimately feminine because because of that? Because of the way our, our body, you know what I mean? I like that. I like the way that sounds. I guess for me personally, I think we we have both. I think. We, we all have divine masculine and feminine within us. It's about mm -hmm. finding that balance. Um, so I don't think one is like you guys were discussing earlier, like we all start out as women and then, or, you know, as female and then we change. So I think we all have the ability to do it. It's just deciding to choose it back, deciding to tap into yeah. that, deciding to discover that, deciding to read about that and tap into it without finding yourself feeling like, oh, that's feminine. Like it's a negative thing because it's yeah. not. Yeah. The Ray Hale said something again about divine feminine and masculine energy. She said it has nothing to do with biological sex. And what she means is what people call gender. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, if that's a societal construct. I'm a divine masculine energy, but I'm a female. Um, mm. So to your mm -hmm. point, Jasmine, these 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 energies live within us. Mm -hmm. And if if we embrace them, it doesn't like it doesn't that. always conflict. It like doesn't. The, it no, goes together. Like each year, each it's year. a beautiful yeah. balance. Yo, that, I love it that is. idea of your 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 you know you're just a divine spirit. So whatever that is, that is your divine spirit. Mm -hmm. You just so happen to be a male or a female, you know what I'm saying or whatever. Yeah. But your entity is actually you're on a spiritual plane, yeah. not your physical. That it was sense. like what y'all were talking about earlier when talking about God. The fact that we can call God a man or a woman is still simplifying God because God is yeah. universal. Yeah, you right. know, we put God mm -hmm. in this box and God is the box. God is the table that the box is sitting on. <laughs> God is the matter outside of the box. God exactly. is the matter inside the box. So we yeah, can't absolutely. just limit God to something absolutely. so That's small. Right. Right. And, let, and right. let's be honest, if God was a gender, God would be transgender. Like It's like yeah. God would not be one or the other. Mm. You know what I'm saying? God would be in between. But to your point, Jasmine, 
God is all things, shapes and no mm -hmm. shapes, forms and no forms. Yes. Yeah, it, it, remi it actually reminds me of, <laughs> of, of King Magician Warrior Lover too, right? Like, yeah, I was just about to the ask notion, you. the notion of like, even like, let's take King for instance, right? And man typically has this like obsession with dominance and with power, and embrace the idea of like the king within themselves, right? Mm -hmm. Usually, those men that have that approach wind up getting their heads cut off, right? It's like mm -hmm. it, because it, it breeds just this idea of totality and power that actually there's something that's greater than you when it comes to that power, right? In right, fact, right. your power is actually given to you by something greater and you actually have access to it. That's the divine mm -hmm. idea of like kingship, mm -hmm. right? It's like, it's less about it's something that you just have internally. It's actually an energy that it's existed from the beginning of time and you're given access to it, yes. right? And if you and know how to handle it, you know? And I, and I look at this very, very similarly, right? Like the divine mother, and the divine father are things that are larger than all of us. Yes. Right. But actually, we have access to mm -hmm. and our true our, our whole power, right, as a complete human being is one that knows the ability to tap into all of those things. Yeah. I, I can liken that what you're just saying right there and how you're just what you're speaking about right there. I, it's funny, it reminds me of college. It reminds me of the first time that I interacted with <laughs> a woman that was, was really literally like the divine feminine. And mm -hmm. me and you chief, we kind of were talking about this where it's almost unbelievable. Like you actually almost are like, I don't, th this cannot be, you cannot just be this, this balance, <laughs> this understanding, this, you know, uh, emotionally wise, emotionally intelligent, like this, you know, just this kind of goddess energy. Mm -hmm. Can you guys speak to the first time that y'all met a woman like that? What was she like? And what were your thoughts? Like, do you remember meeting that woman? I remember the first time I saw it in music, it was probably Badu. I was like, what mm. the fuck? Badu, I, Badu yeah, and yeah. Lauren Hill felt like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yo, did you did you did you desire I, them like immediately? Yes, I, I was a crazy? kid. I know Definitely. because <laughs> that's the same time as you gotta understand, like for those of you who are like Gen, I, I Gen Z, Gen Z, and you just got hip to Badu, and when the shit came out in the nineties, yes. like Foxy Brown, Lil Kim, you was a little, like we was little kids, and right. they're they're running around at the same time as Foxy Brown, Lil Kim, and all of a sudden yes. Badu and Lauren Hill come out, and I was like, yo. That's my wife. And I actually <laughs> thought Badu was Ghanaian. Like, I know. I thought that yeah. too, bro. Especially. I was like, hold on, man. We got to get a DNA test. Hold on. Yo, <laughs> like, I, like mesmerized. Like, I remember, the, I, I'm, I'm going to say this. Do not get me with a joke. I met her. And she said, thanks, sugar. And, and held my hand like this. Wow. I went in and wow. she held my hand. Wow. She closed that's, on that's, my hand like that. Wow. How no, long did it take you to like, watch it? I didn't watch it for at least a week. I just I, had my hand in the air. I while was there, like, bro. like, oh my god! No, yo, no, true, true story. I, I first felt time like I I, my body, like I was like, what the fuck is going on right now? The first time yeah. I met Badu was with George 2.0, and she just walks by, and she didn't say anything. She just looked at me. And you know when you hear stories of Medusa and like she turns you to yeah, stone man. and shit. Yes, I was like paralyzed. You know my eyes was all super <laughs> like this. Like, and I Definitely. went to the bathroom. I swear we were at a concert and Yo. I literally clutched my eyes. That was my first encounter. I get when it. you Crazy meet the body. divine feminine, you it's fucking like know. It. You know. You're like, know. wait a second. That's how I no, felt no. about Sade. That's how I felt about Sade. Oh God! Yeah. Like guy. the oh, very first like and and that's the thing, Sade became cool to millennials like at a certain point, right? But uh -huh. like my dad was in love with Sade too, so yes. I guess my, my, yes, my dad too. In love with her. My Absolutely. dad too. And I used to hate singers <clears throat> that would be like, "Man, Sade don't got no reins though," and Sade don't got. It's they were looking at all these head. earthly things. I was mm -hmm. like, "Y'all looking at the earth? Y'all looking at the earth? Y'all don't see mm -hmm. the spirit of this woman? You don't even like." I felt like I heard. I heard what felt like the afterlife that I wanted to live in. Oh my God. So I have a question. Nigga, have a it, is the, it is the default afterlife soundtrack just playing with Absolute. the clouds. Absolutely. Jasmine, what were you saying? <laughs> so when you all experience these women, like give me an adjective. Like, how did they make you feel? Like, give me an uh, adjective. Yo, I'm not even gonna lie. Shade made me feel everything. Like, like, like he's a, he's every love, thing, like, and it, it's, it's, it's like, to be honest, it's kind of dangerous so serious when you said no, that. I'm, I'm, because, because I couldn't put my finger on it for a long time. And I was like, man, cause there would be seasons where I couldn't listen to her. 
Oh. Like it'd be seasons where I was like, man, I can't listen to it. And I had to think about, yo, why is that? And it was because there were certain parts of myself that I didn't want to feel at the moment. Mm, you know, like, you know when like there's certain people that like you Listen, can't hide them out. Yeah, like, you can't. Don't you can't see hide them. me. That's don't see like, me all the way. No, uh, that's all actually the, the realest way? thing. Well, that's what we're supposed to do. That's what it Yo, is. Yo, I'm gonna call you. No, yeah. you're not. Yep. They make yeah. it. What You're what like, damn, I definitely feel like home. You can't yeah. even lie to them. Like you go to lie to them and they just tell you to that's because not you don't have to. You don't have to lie to a guy. And you what can't. You fuck? can't lie to them. You're like yeah. translucent yeah. to them. And that's exactly and I'll be honest, like, did I feel overwhelmed? Yes. Did I feel mm -hmm. seen? Yes. But was I also afraid? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. I was. Absolutely. And I was a I was a boy. Even now, when I meet, like I, I've been uh, building with 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 uh a woman who I actually think in our generation, and she's so young, she's in her thirties. Um, Patrice Colors, you know, mm -hmm. one of the founders of Black Lives Matter. When mm -hmm. you're in her presence, and I've been blessed to be in her presence a lot lately, she has this divine feminine energy. And now, as a man, it's interesting because I don't feel the same things I felt as a boy, but I do still feel like a humility. So what what used to be just fear. And, and, and uh, intimidation it has now translated into humility when I'm before her. Mm. Mm. That's beautiful. Mm. Right, like, <laughs> moment yeah. for the divine. <laughs> yeah, in college, I, that girl, it was a girl named Danny. When I tell you, she, I was way <laughs> too young. I was way too young for Danny, man. <laughs> Danny, Danny. Hey! Danny. I knew it. Danny, what, if you remember what me, was the please. safety word? None of can we edit. Can we edit this in post? Pineapple. Danny, pineapple, pineapple. earmuffs. <laughs> Danny, Danny changed my life, man. Oh man, <laughs> you you didn't include? Did you tell everybody that you took an edible before the show? I did not, but I am on an edible. <laughs> I took it, and I definitely took it before the show, and uh, it's kicking my ass right now. But it's cool though. <laughs> You're doing this a great is, job. This shit You're is well, what this shit is what Zaz zip in my ass right now, okay? But it's all good. Jasmine, good. do you feel when you so do you feel that there's a lot of examples of divine masculine in, in our generation? We're talking a lot about divine feminine, uh, you know, and the great cosmic mother. Where is the great cosmic father? Mm. Mm. The fact that I had to sit here and think about that. Yeah. Um, That's why I asked. I, it. <laughs> I honestly, I, 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 I don't know. Oh, well, you know what? One that I have seen is an individual online. He is this guy who teaches young boys like yep. karate, ninjutsu. Yep. Um, oh, he's a, he's, yeah. a, he's gonna be a recruit. Yeah, that's a general. Him. I can't think of his name. Yes. but I've seen his work and how he talks to the children yes. and yes. and that what you see when he's you know on his <clears throat> knees and talking to them face to face that's yes. that beautiful um divine feminine energy that i'm talking about yep. yes. able to to soften oneself you know getting on their level and talking to them absolutely not them. oh it's so beautiful to see i him cannot work. think of his name i know exactly who you're talking yeah. about when he speaks, yeah. i listen i'll be like damn like yes yeah. absolutely <laughs> yeah it's a different feeling yeah <laughs> He like, and what Absolutely. are you going to do? I am going to figure out the way to make sure that my people have economics and social. Like, you be going in. You know, uh, Nana, I know uh, we've agreed with everything Ray Hale has said, but did you see who she uh, put in the comments? She said, you, nigga. No, 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 no. There's another one. Oh. I Morgan see. Freeman, yes. <laughs> Let's, yo, yo. Yo, Ray, you speaking my language. Oh, yeah. Speaking my language. Yeah, you know what? No, no, no. Hold on. I gotta understand where she stands on him. I don't know. Ray. Ray, Ray, I, I, Ray, Ray make it clear. Make it clear. Where do you stand? You think where do you Morgan stand? Freeman embodies it. I think you're gonna be disappointed. No, no. <laughs> Hold on. I don't wanna I don't wanna bias that. She's, She's, She's just dying. She's just She's just gonna die about it. No. Oh, I wanna hear the argument. I wanna hear this argument. Just, so, just so you know, we had like three songs that mentioned Morgan Freeman. <laughs> you know what's funny? I went back and listened to it. I was like, man, you were gonna really like like the super fans that really read the lyrics, they're gonna be like, yo, what do they got against Morgan Freeman? Yeah, we got a song coming Why out. Why are they talking about him so much? We, we got a song coming out. 
Look at Nadia Myers for the line. See, I she never knows. trusted that yeah. ear I don't she trust knows. that goddamn yeah. ear in. She knows. I don't yeah. fuck with this nigga. Yo, when I tell you I came on, I came on Let me be with clear. these guys, and I was listening to the music. And you know, you listen to the music, and you just start hearing, you know, chain themes. And I was like, yo, what? Did they fucking meet Morgan Freeman? And they, what the fuck happened with Morgan Freeman? We've you never don't need to him. meet. You don't need to meet scumbags to know. Let's read from a distance, bro. So, you can read from a distance. Spanky, oh no, Spanky, uh, Spanky, uh, I'm a bull says, nah, not Morgan. He's slimy. The slimy, that's yeah, the thing. Yeah. Some of these slimy guys sleazy. may yeah. appear at first to be ah, divine, divine, absolutely. and that is, and us as, ah, like, you know, wow. a lot of our spirits are. Wow. You didn't know this? Why they always wow. had him think of playing voice? It's wow. not, what, what, what was that? It's what not was just that? him. Wow. It's a lot but of these. It, it's absolute. It's an archetype. It's a it's guy like it's, that that it's they it's would actually have playing God's Ooh, voice, always yes. playing like this architect of like this overseeing kind of like spirit or a God. Friend to a white a man. Wow. Often. Nah, mm. it's, wow. It's, all, it's always that. And that and that and that is the older. Let's just break down a few archetypes. That's an older archetype. Like wow. there's a few of them, uh, the other names we can mention in entertainment or whatnot. Then the younger forms of those usually look like hotep ass niggas that are disguising as yoga uh, niggas. Yes, exactly. They disguising themselves as the friend of the queens, and they're gonna wear the t shirt that says "Protect mm. Black Women uh, at All yeah. Costs," and mm. they're gonna be the same niggas doing the sly pimp shit mm -hmm. that somebody who is not as quote unquote woke as them is doing. And that that is that like those kind of people. Are the people that are most dangerous because they live in a facade, they disguise, they manipulate, they may even believe themselves. These niggas at, as self-righteous. Mm -hmm. These niggas just mm -hmm. fucked up Shawshank Redemption. For, like I'm never gonna be able to watch. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> just Bro, no, just re, just remix it. Just insert some insert a like new I'm history. Never gonna be able to enjoy Shawshank. Just insert a new Again. character. Do y'all no. like y'all understand what y'all just did to Morgan Freeman? What? I'm not, I'm not done. I'm not even done. Yo, I never, this is this is never one. thought about that. Like that's yo, I'm telling you, this shit, on. this shit is so interwoven into everything. Everything that we're consuming is 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 it's the it's and it's like this patriarchal and that's shit. why it's important to relearn. Yo, and, that, yo, and that's key. That's key because here, like here's the thing. Here's the thing. When we talk about patriarchy, we have a, we have, we have like mascots of patriarchy, right? And they're usually the guys that are at the far end of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. The reality is that in the same way that racism isn't always like rearing its ugly head, there's covert shit, there's internal shit, there's internalized patriarchy, right? And even as progressive men, that's some shit that we got to deal with. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and, I think, and I think for any man to think that they're above the idea of dealing with their own patriarchy is the thing that's dangerous, oh, right? Yeah. When you're talking about the guys that like, they preach a certain way, Right. And then behind closed doors, they got their own internalized issues. We got to be able to be looking at our mirror in the mirror. And also, I think, relying on having people that we trust to be a part of that, too. And I think having women as mirrors is equally as important as yeah. you also just trying to read in your own mirror. If not, you more, know, than that. if not more. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. And, I, and this this wow. is a, something as men, you don't you don't get to a point where like you're done working. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what age you are. So you can get to like I no no you know we're big curb your enthusiasm fans, Absolutely. but the last season of Larry David he had a lot of jokes surrounding like to me it was a response to the Me Too movement, and mm -hmm. I didn't appreciate that season as much. I know how far Larry pushes it, I get it, um, but I think he was playing into one of those archetypes of the old man, like innocent creep. You know that mm -hmm. shit, like, oh, mm -hmm. I'm the grandfather. I'm kind, I'm harmless. I didn't mean to do this. All mm -hmm. his jokes that season are that. Mm -hmm. um, Jackson, that the very last season, I didn't see that one. I saw. Yeah, that I, I want to ask you a question. Yeah, I want to ask you a question. Okay. As a woman, mm -hmm. right, who has already, <laughs> so when men, when we say woke, clearly we're not even woke. It's like woke. It's like woke level one. It's not even like it's nowhere near. <laughs> like there's like a whole, there's a whole library of woke that we haven't. We don't even fucking. We didn't even know. There's a whole divine energy like that we're not even on, right? Mm -hmm. For you as a woman, when you see three men mm -hmm. discovering these things or <laughs> or like mm -hmm. like having these come to life moments, like I'm like, this This is probably the reason why at like 22, they're like, 
would you grow the <laughs> fuck up? <laughs> You're already like 22 years old, but they already are like 30, you know, they're already thinking forward, but we're mm -hmm. still, we, we just, it's, we consume so much patriarchy in yeah. every aspect. Mm -hmm. Even if, almost to even our, at a spiritual plane, how how was that as a woman to see that and to and to like see us discovering these things or? Ooh, so it's a did loaded, we take too damn long? No, no, it's a loaded question. The thing is, I don't really live in the space of like what's right or wrong or what's taking too long or you mm. know. The thing is, is that the conversation is being had. The thing is, you guys have discovered a way to have this conversation, and that is what makes me most excited because you guys are not only having the conversation amongst yourselves, but you're sharing it with other people, which leads to more conversations happening. Because a lot of times women, we have these retreats and we have these gatherings and we're mm. getting together in these small circles and leading guided meditations and learning mm. about ourselves and journaling. Yes. And we don't know if there's spaces like this for you all. And it's kind of hard, like, like I, I went on a women's retreat this weekend and it was a, it was a full, I mean, it was a full body journey. Like it was, I, still don't really have the words and to be able to be in the woods and to scream and to cry and to wow. share. Mm -hmm. wow. Wow. Why don't men have retreats? I want you guys uh, to have it. Yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Man, I'm, so, I'm so glad you, I'm so glad you said that. I'm so glad you said retreats, that. man. Because, because, because here's the thing too, right? Is like n name one time, one time in history where women haven't showed up to do the work to push things forward when it comes to balancing masculinity and femininity. Name one time in history. Come on. Women have always shown up. And, and I can Every, literally- Always shown up, yeah. right? And, and, and I think, and, and absolute, and at least like, you know, I think I'm thinking about the things that have led up to this moment that we are in time, right? Mm -hmm. I remember feeling this very, very deeply when we were in the continent, where it just felt like the, the energy, the energy in the world like the balance of feminine and masculine energy was becoming more and more like exacerbated and out of balance where it's like, it was just literally about to combust. It felt like it was about to combust, mm -hmm. right? And I remember coming back to the States and being like, man, it feels like, I remember Trump got elected and just the, mm -hmm. all that. I was like, man, this is getting worse. Just the, not even about him, just about that energy in the world, right? And so then we're here, right? And I, I really feel like when I look at this year and I look at you know the series of events that led up to this moment, it's a reckoning. Mm -hmm. It's a year of reckoning. Mm -hmm. It's like women have been doing this work Yo, since the very beginning. The beginning of and somebody tired. And, and somebody has. And, and it's gotten to a point where like it can no longer proceed to move forward if nope. work isn't done. Yes. In a, in a same way to act like because absolutely those spaces for men right now. Yeah. Even just the notion of like embracing that as a man is already looked at mm -hmm. as like. Absolutely. As feminine, and then even too, even the way that I can bring up Sade and be like, man, it's hard to even see myself and see those parts of myself and have to mm -hmm. reckon with myself. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's that's a challenging thing. So I imagine think changing even even the language retreat. we use around yeah. that. Yeah, I'm like, but imagine a man retreat where you niggas go to the beach and y'all talk about you know being men and Sade is playing. I want to go there. I will no, say, I will say, I've I'm done there. I've done men's ret retreats in my life. Okay. Um. I've done I've done several. It's time to do another one because it, it's been it's been too yeah. long. It's so um, important. And, and a lot of one thing that Bell Hooks speaks about in that book that I, I rave about, we real cool that I was reading in Omaha with y'all. Like mm -hmm. she talks about how a lot of the men that actually are trying to do the work end up feeling lonely and, and, and don't have solidarity and trust. And mm -hmm. I and I I I definitely feel that. I, I cannot I you know the last week was very really difficult as it felt like three events happened in, in, in what felt like seven days. I'm not sure what the time frame was from um, uh, Oluwatoyin being murdered after the protest to um, what I heard, heard about the bonds um, mm -hmm. and the, the woman who said she was sexually assaulted by him and then intimidated by his people. And then all the Wahala around OK Africa and mm -hmm. the the experiences that women had in and out of the out of the company the, because of all that like i felt you know other than, if i didn't have you know you all and definitely you nana in, in the process who was very familiar with these communities like i i didn't feel like i had enough men around mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. that to even bounce ideas off or men that i could trust 
And so that's that's I think what prevents even the men that are ready, like right now, because everybody evolves at their own time, to having things like retreats. And that's something that we have to work on, period. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The, the the older we get, the the more we have to push because we're still living in this world where it's like you get older, you get a you get a you get your house, you get your your dog, your kids, you get your little incubated world. But you don't connect enough with the community, even though you got your friends you play video games with or your thread um, with all your homies on it. That physical when you talked about screaming, Jasmine, I've never screamed with a group of men outside of sports. Wow. And I and I would love to wow. do that shit. Wow. I would love to do that. I know and that's that a scream from a different place. Right. That's not even the scream for where yeah. you really need to scream. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they do, like she said, they have men's retreats, but they're it's not as prominent as women's retreats. It's like far. when you meet those divine feminine women, you're meeting what you should be. So that's why it's so mm-hmm. scary to you. It's like, what the fuck, like, and and, and man, I, I don't know if y'all had these experiences to add to that. Like, Yuli, when you asked the question earlier, just about like you know meeting women that we recognize the divine feminine in. Mm. Um, that's existed for me. Like, I think my first lens with my mother, um, she was like, for me, a first lens to God. Right. And so I see that Mm. and I think that, right. And I look at, then I look at family and I look at like certain women cousins that I was closest to. They were also in tune with the divine feminine. Right. And then that manifested in my relationships. Right. And we're both platonic and romantic. Right. And that becomes Mm -hmm. a theme. And so when I, when I always looked at my relationship with that, I was like, okay, there's always a connection that I have with these women, right? But I think the way in which I looked at it, I also looked at it in, in like, you know, because we have a stereotype of what those women are, right? It's like mm-hmm, they mm-hmm. burn the stage, no. they got the crystals, they come in different forms, they go to the retreats, you know what I'm saying? And, they, and the way they navigate the world, they always navigate, or they tend to navigate very, very well in the, in the, in the spiritual realm, right? And it felt like my role was to like protect these women, right? Because I, I always looked at them as like a, they. I always looked at them as like a gift that God gave the world. I'm from right? Philly, and, and but no, I just want to. I want to. I want to close this point because in a lot of ways, even just that, right? Like on one level, we can be like, oh, that's noble. Like yeah, you know, protect these women, protect these women. Mm-hmm. But even just the idea of defaulting to a, a hero and a protector. Mm. It's really, it's really actually trying to be a savior, right? Mm, and and, and, and I remember I realized that mm. like later in my life, mm. when and you know when I realized it is when my own inner like embracing of the divine feminine within my own life, like mm. I I went through a chapter where like I was becoming more of an empath and I was uncomfortable with it. I remember, right? I I went, I went, I, you were there, wow. you were there. I went through a whole chapter where like I felt my energy like rebalancing. Right. Mm. And, and when I felt that switch and that, that shift in dynamic within myself, the realization dawned on me that, like, I have been looking at my life like I've been protecting these women when in actuality they've been protecting me my whole life. They've been watching out for me. Their, like my whole relationship with them was them preparing me for this moment when I feel yeah. a shift within myself. Yes, mm. absolutely. Mm-hmm. No. And, that, and I, I think, think it's, man, we got to acknowledge that. I think we have to acknowledge how much women have been protecting us. So, and I think for women, I think it's important to understand that not sharing certain things that have happened to you, whether it's harassment, Mm -hmm. assault, um, whatever it is, it, it, it actually robs us of our duty as well. And the way that we can include ourselves in protecting you. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean physical protection all the time. In fact, most of the times it's not physical protection. But we have to protect each other. And I think mm-hmm. uh, as Abrea Manning just said that we protect each other in our own ways. Mm-hmm. That's actually the important mm-hmm. thing. A lot of men think like women need protection and some think they weak. That's where that savior complex and that phrase Captain save a comes from. Mm-hmm. It's like, nah, they, it's not because they're weak, actually. Mm-hmm. We need to protect them because they've been protecting us, to your point, Lena. Jasmine, mm-hmm. I'm sure I'm going to ask you that question again. <laughs> You recognize you got three guys who are over here <laughs> like they've been protecting us the whole yeah. motherfucking time. Goddamn, yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah, I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. What is that? You know, I I just I, I want to get your thoughts on mm-hmm. on on that when you when you're seeing that and when you're hearing that. I think mm-hmm. it's challenging the idea of strength. You know, we always think that strength is like when you can lift a car, or you can build a building, mm-hmm. but some people don't realize that strength is vulnerability. Strength mm-hmm. is feeling. 
Strength is being able to sit in that feeling and then process it. A lot of times feelings may come up for people and they're like, oh no, I'm gonna compartmentalize that. I'm not dealing with that. But a part of like things like meditation, mm -hmm. it's about going to the X. It's about going to that sensitive place, that spot to unveil whatever is in there. So that's where the gems and the crystals are of like wisdom and growth and intelligence. And if you are afraid to go to that place to dive through that vulnerability, through that discomfort, you're gonna end up in the same place over and over again. So mm -hmm. it's like, yes, we've been protecting you. Things seen and unseen, crown of your head to sole of your feet. You know, mm -hmm. that's what we do. So what am I trying to say? <laughs> Well, I think that you're saying that strength and, and vulnerability is the yes. first thing. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Or yeah. Orpa JM just said, black women are just expected to be strong. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think that what while you're redefining what strength is, is important, not just for uh, men or trans men, but also trans women and women. Mm -hmm. Like, it's important that we recognize that strength for both of us, for all of us, rather, is something that's different. Um, it's not what we've been taught. Mm -hmm. um, I do think also we we have to do a better job. And when I say we, I'm talking about me and my brethren at creating safe spaces for women to feel comfortable to share with us. Because sometimes yes. I know me and none have been guilty yeah. of this. We overreact, nigga. Like we be we be mad. <laughs> we mad. And, and then the women are like, yo, what, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, why are you? Yeah, what the fuck? Shut the fuck up. Like, yo, you chill. You're going to get <laughs> no, yourself locked up. That's Jasmine the realest is one thing. of my good friends. She is my chill pill. We have we have sat at bars so many times where I'm like, I'm going to blow it up. She'd be like, no, no, no. You're not going to blow it up. You're going <laughs> to But, <laughs> but yeah, like, that, man, I'm so glad you brought that up because, <laughs> yes, it's like me, me and Jadena have a tendency to like, this is so real for us for a lot of different reasons, right? And I think that we have a tendency to like, I know for me, I'll speak for me, I see red. When I see like, a man like literally do something to a woman, right? And do a, some, a, a woman wrong. It just, my, like all my, everything I just read, I just see red, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I've realized that again, this woman that has already been protecting me prior to this chapter, now when she goes to confide in me, has to now think about protection of me again because she's like, Nana might do some Come shit. Come on. This is, this is, oh, this yes. is you know, no, yes. Nana Nana. Nana. So, yes. Yui, so just so to be clear, that's what I was just referring to. This came yeah. out of a conversation I just had with Whippa Wiley. Wow. Um, and for those of you who don't know, she's been the extraordinary creative director that's been with me and Nana working for years, even before y'all knew who we were. Uh, that conversation was real as fuck because Whippa was talking specifically about moments with me, with Nana, where she she was like, yo, you know, we want to share with you, but y'all be like kind of wilding like your <laughs> energy. Wanna fight now, the wanna now, fight now, let me also say this. The divine masculine doesn't look like us getting rid of some of the, the natural, like primal instincts that we have. Mm -hmm. It does not mean like when we talk about toxic masculinity, mm -hmm. some men are like, nah, man, women, are these matriarchs is coming trying to dead our aggression. Yeah. Don't mean that. No. It means that we have to channel it and rewire yeah. it yeah. and so that we can manage it. In African traditional religions, it was not about purging yourself of these energies. It's mm -hmm. actually more yin and yang really and actually. also not even yin and yang so that you're just like a peaceful Zen master. Yes. It's yeah. yin and yang like you know what yeah. to do with that yes. energy. Yes. And so yes. that's what she we have to do you. better she of. She trusts. Trust yeah, she trust and that, that was Whippa's main point. Yes. And, that, and that, yes. so that's it, Yui. I'm glad yes. that none of said it, even Absolutely. though I said that before and you didn't get it and have your aha moment. <laughs> I'm high. I'm sorry. I'm high. <laughs> hey, Jasmine, we want to thank you so much. Oh, um, thank you guys. For absolutely. Me. We thank really you. appreciate it. I'm glad y'all are having a great Thank you, Jasmine. Thank absolutely. You. And thank you. And we're going to take your, since you just came from a women's retreat, I'm going to tell you right now, yeah. we pledge um, in doing our own work to do the thank same with, with, with men. You have inspired us today to, to do you. that for sure. And Jasmine, tell people where they can, uh, where they can find you. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. you can find me um, on IG at Hello Miss Wild um, website. Hello Miss Wild, or if you're pregnant and you want to get a 3D, 4D ultrasound in Atlanta, Hey Baby ATL. Hey. 4D. Yes. <laughs> wow. See so your baby live. Shit, man. Wow. God is yo. Got three 4D man. 
Yeah. I might, I might, I might come see you. I need a 4D reader. <laughs> <laughs> in general, just a general over just 4D in my whole life. I just want to Thank you, Jasmine. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bless. Bless. Man. Wow. Thank you for bringing her on the show, Yui. First yeah, of all, absolutely. Thank you. Not a lot of not a lot of people are focusing on the spiritual, the spiritual portal that's 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 um hap- opening up right now for us yeah. to see ourselves. I thought it was when we're talking when we mentioned mirror. I was like, I felt like as we were talking through this episode that that's what it was. We were we're having a mirror episode, and I just wanted to know, like, as a woman, she's probably just sitting here like, mm-hmm, exactly, yep. <laughs> Bro, it's like, like, it's like black that. people looking at white people. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, like yeah. 2020. Right. And now right, you exactly. see George right. Floyd, huh? Right, huh. exactly. You remember those t-shirts that like, we made before? They've had, they've had the lead for like thousands <laughs> of years. <laughs> you know how when like, we say generational trauma, like it's thousands and thousands <laughs> and thousands of years. Yo, so right. women are so angry, and us as men are like, why are you so mad? They're like, Yo, nigga. Just so we know. <laughs> That, uh, racism is about like okay so uh, humans have always been afraid of the foreign foreign groups foreign tribes coming in people that look different that's old so prejudices and and xenophobia is old <laughs> but specifically racism is only a few hundred years old and some mm. people mark it uh in 1455 um when the the pope basically okayed europeans to enslave non-christians which at the time was mostly just basically not non-white people but sexism we don't even know the start date mm-hmm. somebody That's, just said patriarchy mm-hmm. and white supremacy she said the connection between patriarchy and white supremacy they rely on each they other they do i i came mm-hmm. oh, so i just came <laughs> up on this shit this, <laughs> this term called um eco-feminism like what yeah, yeah. did yeah, i tell you yeah. about that so no, i was just reading about it eco-feminism is a term that's that that basically means the connection between ecology and feminism is exactly what that person just said. They rely on each other. So you can't have climate change or you can't solve climate change without solving the imbalance of men and women or masculine and feminine energy. Right. Right. Because the idea of exploiting the earth, the idea of penetrating the earth, Mm -hmm. the idea of taking from the earth in a sense, raping the earth of its natural resources for the benefit of mankind that you can't divorce sure. that from from the ideas of patriarchy that's a very uh initially european and white male patriarch uh view of the earth mm-hmm. so we won't we won't be able to solve climate change without solving our gender inequalities and vice versa mm-hmm. and that's what ecofeminism talks about and i thought i love the ideas behind it mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. 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 Yeah. I don't know, man. I, you know, like we, you know, we started off this, <laughs> it's like, like I said, I, when I, when I started going into the book, I had all my front teeth, man. I had my, I had my, whatever you want to call them, the veneers. I had all, <laughs> yeah, I had all these. when I left, when it's like, when you, you ever close a book and then you look like Martin on that boxing episode where he had the, his head was swollen and it was lumps all, <laughs> dirt all over the top of his head. Like he just I know looked, exactly what you're talking yeah, about. He yeah, just looked like right. a, a pillow. Like Definitely. you look like Mike Tyson just hooked Definitely. off on your face, unprotected, just for no reason at all, just aggressive energy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's what it Absolutely. felt like. It just feels like that. And I think as men, if we look at it and we and we we have to it's a fight to heal. Like it's literally it, you have to mm-hmm. really look at this as a battle that you want to win, that you want to heal, mm. that you want to remove. Mm. You want to like, literally, almost on like an exorcism level. Like you want to literally remove it from your Yo, can we just, can we just, that was a word, Yui. I just got to acknowledge that. <laughs> fight to heal. Yes. Like fight to heal. Because we, we we often look at healing as like retreat, actually. Right? Wow. We even call it, we even call wow. it retreat, right? Like wow. we look at it like, we look at it like, oh, let me go heal up from this, this injury. But to fight to heal wow. is a whole different way of actually looking at that. That's, actually, yeah. that's dope. That's dope, bro. That's yeah. the word. Yeah. How many edibles? Um, just the one. It uh, it took me to the moon, man. I, I don't know we, where we I'm at right now. The milligram. I don't know where I'm at. It was at least I, 150 or 160. Bro, 100? I, this was man, a new you, one. You a I'm testing kind of it. Guy, bro. Like, I was I testing it. I'm I'll be too, like in the high I'm five guy. I'm too hey, sensitive. Guy, what's like, up, man? Yeah, me too. I could energies I that like a yeah. hundred, like twenties enough for me. <laughs> hey man, hey God, 
How you doing? I just want to see you on a Tuesday. That's oh, how I, that's where I go. That's I like to get that high. Up on a Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, that's where I like to go. I like to get so high. I'm like, I just want to I just want to peek in God's window real quick. Hey, what y'all eating in there? Bro, okay, shroom, right. shrooms, <laughs> shrooms is way easier for me to deal with than weed edibles, that's which is weird. Oh man, I told you I gotta make y'all some of this shroom chai tea that I made. That's is it better than the instant yam. Come on with the Instagram, man. Don't talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you gave us shroom, shroom chai tea with Instagrams on the side, nigga. Okay, let's talk about the plate, on one of them little plates. We're gonna I'm a, we're gonna close out on this Instagram story, okay? I'm gonna clarify this Instagram story because these motherfuckers think that I don't know how to make yams. Okay, we're in Nebraska, we're in Omaha. <laughs> and we and they're doing this is for the album. I'm an, I'm the new guy on the team. You know, they're kind of testing me a little bit. They're like, all right, let's just see how, you know, how he makes himself useful out here in Omaha. You know what I'm saying? Is he going to carry the back? What's he going to do? Is he going to help us? How is he going to do these things? And I wanted to be as helpful as possible. So I said, you know what, guys, you don't need a chef. I'll cook for you. <laughs> Jadena, at the time, I didn't really know all his. Like his whole personality. I thought you, I thought you were going to stop there because that was already the joke. But no, well, hilarious. <laughs> but because Jadena, Jadena, I did not know all of his like facial expressions at that time. Now I know what it is. But at the time, he was like, oh, sure. <laughs> I could use a little comedy. While I'm, uh, <laughs> I can use a little. Oh, no, you, you got it. You're not even giving enough. You came wait, in there like, yo, I'm wait. a chef. I'm a chef. Yeah, you used I the word cook. chef. You used the word chef, bro. You pie. You, you did this. You did this. Yeah, that's a, that's that's too high for chef what you do. Chef is a metaphor. Chef is a metaphor for what? A metaphor. Uh, uh, oh, that's a career. <laughs> that's a job. <laughs> but actually, you can apply for it on Indeed.com. It's not a metaphor, dog. <laughs> Bro, I don't. I'm even careful with how I talk about like music. Like, I don't come in like I'm a musician. I like I can play, I can produce, I can make shit. But when you say you're a musician, and then somebody's like, "All right, bro, right. like, yeah. do something with this," and they give you this, like, we gave you, we gave you the tools. Here, musician, play, and, and then you can't, and then you doing this. <laughs> Yeah, that's so I not go it. to the supermarket. I've never been oh, to the supermarket. Still going. The supermarket <laughs> was named Gems or something. It was Gems or some shit, right? Um, let me let me go. Let me go, producer. Let me go. Let me go, producer. Okay, this is the second to the last. Let the beat. Let the beat rock. <laughs> let the beat rock for just give me. I'm rapping it. I'm rapping it. Let me let the beat rock. Okay, <laughs> so. <laughs> I don't want the voice of God to come in on this episode. <laughs> I don't want that to happen. We're ending now. I don't want that to happen. Go she ahead, already you. took me on. Go the ahead, you. Put me on. Finish, okay. So wait, so 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 I go to the supermarket. I go to the I go to the aisles. I see different things. I'm like, okay, yam was on the aisle. Was on the list. They gave me a list. I see regular yams. I don't really know what type of pots they have back there though. So I don't really want to get these yams, and they don't have the pots to cook the yams. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To boil them right. I so I see the Insta Yam. I'm like, they'll never know. They're gonna be in. The, they're gonna be in the studio. I grab the Insta Yam. I come back. It just so fucking happens that when I come back and I'm unloading the bags and everything like that, these niggas walk right in and they're like, "What the hell is that? What are you doing there? And what is going on?" And I'm like, "Yeah, it's just a little Insta Yam." They're like, "What the fuck is the Insta Yam?" Oh. And there you go. So it was an Insta Yam, y'all. It was. I was going well, to prepare them Instagram. I was trying to do it in clear. secret. You know, I was trying to do it in secret. Instagram, just so y'all are clear, Instagram is a in microwavable secret. yam. But but here's the thing. To be clear, it microwaves at the same, same time, amount of time as the regular. Also the fallacy of it. So it all they clear. do is wrap it, it in saran wrap and put Instagram on it. That's it. That's the only difference. So the but, same amount of time that it takes to actually boil a yam is the same amount of time it takes to cook. Instagram. And, and look, I think it's safe to say that we did judge you that 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 day. And we said this is not the way of a superior man. This is not the way. But next week we're gonna learn about what the way of the superior man is by David Dita. That is next week's book. It's yes. a controversial book. I don't uh, some of the books that we put on here, like the Dr. Seuss book, we put on because there's some problematic things in it, and next week is no different. Um, so we will be talking about it. It is our season finale. finale. I had an season idea. Finale, I had an idea. 
Wow. For season one. We it's already been a great s- season, man. Yeah. Wow. Hold on. We're not done. Yeah, I want to say, I want to actually suggest <laughs> that. I want to suggest that. So we have a season two already queued up. We got the book list, blah, blah, blah. But I actually think that we should do, I uh, I didn't tell you guys this before. Yeah, I should have said this. But it's, it's, I'm doing it live. Do. Yeah, I want to I want to yeah. do a Zoom party. With some of the people that have been in these comments, yes, uh, I would to love to meet to know them. them. Like, yes. you take like a hundred, like the yes. first hundred of them, yeah. and I would love to meet you parties. guys. Yeah, we get to meet that. them, see them, talk them. <laughs> I would the love shit. To do Everybody that. brings some mathematics, you know, yes. a little tank thing, yes. and then we just like, you know, what I'm saying, in between the seasons. I love yes. it. Yes, that I would be it. dope. That would be dope. So after we do the season finale, then we'll we'll announce uh kind of like an after, like not an after party, but like. Yeah. A mixer, a big, yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Uh, our what does our book club mixer look like? Yeah, exactly. Our virtual mixer. I, I, I'm like. glad. I, yeah, I yeah right. you know, no, that's great. No, 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 that's, that's great. great. That's, great. that's yeah. amazing, All man. Because right. these um, people been they've been following us. So whole many people. Every, I'm seeing so, so many, many names. of you. We I'm know so many of your names. Uh, Roman, yeah. Roman, John Arthur's been here too. Like yes. some of the the, the the people in our tribe. So absolutely, y'all are invited. I know the one, the real, the real ones, the regulars, the top generals. Y'all will be there. Um, but please tune in next week. We'll be here on Tuesday at 5 p.m. PST, 8 p.m. Um, EST. EST, talking about the way of the superior man. Bless y'all. Bless. Peace, 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 peace. Boom. Peace. 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 Peace.